Hey guys, in this video, I break down another EMS acronym that you must be aware of for your altered mental status patients, and that is AEIOU TIPS. AEIOU TIPS, also known as TIPS over vowels, is an acronym designed to help you remember some of the vast causes of altered mental status for you to consider during your patient assessment. Let's jump right onto the computer and see exactly what the acronym is helping you to assess for. All right, now that we're on the computer, let's take a look at what exactly tips over vowels or AEIOU tips means when we're looking in our patient assessment and what we need to be looking out for for signs and symptoms of altered mental status, okay? A is for alcohol, okay? Alcohol, we want to be looking for certain things like is there alcohol on scene? Is there evidence of intoxication? Have they blown, you know, triple over the legal limit on a breathalyzer? Uh, have they admitted to alcohol use? Are they slurring their speech? Do they smell like alcohol? All of these different kinds of things could clue us into, are they intoxicated? Now, the next thing, uh, E stands for a couple different things. The first biggest one is epilepsy. Okay, and epilepsy, remember, is uh, seizures. Okay, so does this patient have a seizure history or are they prone to seizures? Or maybe this is a new onset seizure, maybe due to infection or fever or, you know, an overdose or something of that nature. Okay, the next thing we have to look for is um, is there an endocrine cause, okay? And endocrine, remember, that is your hormones. So is it a hormonal cause? Do they have too much or too little of a certain type of hormone in their body, okay? And the last one is an electrolyte imbalance. So maybe they have too much calcium or too much potassium or not enough potassium, or they have some form of imbalance of electrolytes that are causing the brain to not function uh, well enough to perfuse, so now we have altered mental status. Okay, now I is for infection. Okay, and typically we think, you know, sepsis when we're thinking infection, but we should also be thinking like UTIs, we should think like uh, central nervous type infections like meningitis or encephalitis or something like that, that that goes right and attacks the brain itself, okay? Um, o, very simple, overdose, okay? Was this accidental? Was it purposeful? Was it on a you know recreational drug or was it on a prescription drug? Uh, is there signs of an overdose, okay? Do we see things like the alcohol? Do we see paraphernalia? Do we see remnants of what they've used? Or is it just symptomatic and signs and symptoms that we're seeing, you know, constricted pupils, decreased, you know, respiratory rate and signs that we could be pointing to an overdose. All right, so with you, we're thinking, we're, we're looking at uremia, okay? And uremia is, is the breakdown of urine, okay? Now, you guys aren't going to be doing that. You guys aren't going to be doing, you know, blood work on scene to figuring out what exactly is, you know, the construct of their urine and what's passing and what's not passing and the chemical structures within the urine. However, you can sit there and look at the color, the cloudiness, you know, are there signs of like a UTI, okay? Um, do they, you know, have chronic kidney disease? Are they on dialysis? Is there something within the urine system that maybe is malfunctioning to think that now we might have these increased uh, chemical structures within the urine that would cause altered mental status, okay? Now, moving over here to T, we're talking mostly trauma, okay? But we could also be thinking about tumors, 
okay? Trauma, of course, if there's trauma and we have blood loss or there's trauma to the head, we're going to get altered mental status. However, if there are tumors within the brain, we can absolutely get um, altered mental status. Now, the last thing that we sometimes throw in here is temperature, okay? Are they uh, hypo or hyperthermic? Okay, are they too low body temperature or are they too high body temperature? Okay, now moving to the next eye is insulin. Okay, and here we're thinking diabetics. Okay, um, is there a problem with a diabetic? Do they have uh, too low sugar in that they're hypoglycemic or are they too high sugar? Okay, and they're hyperglycemic. Okay, glycemic. Okay, um, too low, hypo, too high, hyper, and glycemic is looking at the sugar within the bloodstream. So, are these patients, you know, too low, too high? Are they DKA where they're over 400, or are they hypo and maybe unconscious or altered when they're below 60? Okay, when we're moving on to P, we're now thinking mental. Okay, so we're into psychosis. Okay, now remember, a lot of people can have psychosis because they're on a drug, or they could have, you know, an acute uh, psychosis or something like that because of, you know, depression or some other type of mental illness. But these could also be reoccurring psychoses, maybe because of a you know tumor or maybe because of you know schizophrenia or some other type of chronic mental health uh, mental health disorder and the last thing is shock or sepsis okay now remember sepsis has already kind of been covered in infection but we want to make sure that we're talking about it again when we're talking about shock. Remember, there's there's multitudes of different types of shock, all causing altered mental status for different reasons. So we wanna narrow it down. If we're looking at shock specifically, we wanna narrow it down into what type of shock. And this just kinda of gives you that click of like, okay, I'm thinking, I might be thinking shock here, what kind of shock? So hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. This is a great way, like I said, to remember different causes for altered mental status that you guys then can sit there and go, okay, the, this might be a cause for this, this altered mental status. Let me you know, go down this path a little bit until proven otherwise. Well guys, that's it for today's video. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video.